Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I thank God for Jesus. I am uh, excited because I believe and I trust God that he knows exactly what is going on and what he's doing in the midst of it all. And, uh, and I'm trusting, I'm believing God that, that he knows what's best. And I've made up my mind to rest in this. A lot of things that I desire to do, especially concerning the gathering of, 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 of the people of God, assembling ourselves together. But there are so many things that run through my mind, and there are so many adjustments that we'll, we'll have to make. But we are making those adjustments. We're getting everything prepared because, most importantly, we want everybody to stay as healed as they can, and we're trust and alive, and we're trusting God that even as, you know, we, we'll keep praying and we keep trusting and we keep standing in the Word of God and, and that we will experience the power of God as we move in obedience to God. And so that's what we're doing. We're waiting as he's given us permission and given us wisdom and understanding. And then uh, we'll stay right there and we'll move by his spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. So I'm asking everybody to just hold on just a little while longer and let's just see what God is doing. It looks like we'll be moving back in this building pretty soon based on everything having come in and getting everybody trained. Um, then we'll give a date as soon as we can. Um, I am, I'm excited. I pray that all is well with you. I pray that you're encouraged. I pray that your heart is in a great place. I pray that your soul is trusting God, is seeking God for wisdom and understanding. And, um, and then I want to talk. Uh, we'll stay right today. today. We'll move by the spirit. Uh, we can do all Christ. things asking through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Hold on just a little while longer. Uh, and and when I reference God. it, look like we're we'll moving back in this field. I'm talking about soon, based all the on things that God has having come in and getting everybody trained, trained and saved um, us. Then we'll give to a day as soon as, soon as we do can. An um, so I want to talk about I that am, today. I'm excited. I want to go into prayer with you. I pray that you And then I want to go right into the word. It's in a great place. I want to go into prayer. I want to go right into the word. God. It's trusting God. It's seeking God for wisdom. James and chapter 1, verse 17. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, right right now, we'll, we'll stay right there. We'll Christ move by our spirit. We can do all things. We can pray by Jesus. Who Hold on to the Lord. God, trust me. When I reckon you taking me to all things, yield it to the Holy Spirit that we can be led according to your directions, according to the purpose of your heart, the intent of your mind. We're submitted, God. Father God, we know that we have been going through for a while. But, Father God, it does not matter. As long as you are with us and we are with you, we know that we will be all right. And so we trust you. We bless you. We glorify you. We worship you. We thank you that we can hear your voice in this season, that we can humble ourselves and submit to your voice and your authority and your leading in the Holy Spirit. Father God, we thank you for the unity of the believers, of the saints. We thank you, Father God, that you're keeping us sound sturdy and steadfast. We thank you, Father God, that we have sound minds and that we are not afraid and that we're not losing our mind. We thank you, Father God, that we're not anticipating or uh, uh, thinking about anything negative or evil or any kind of suicide or any kind of depression or any kind of oppression. All of that we uproot, we curse, we render it null and void in the name and by the authority of Jesus Christ. Oh, Father God, and we bless you. We, we thank you for giving us a spirit of joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We thank you for giving us the spirit of gladness and hope. Oh, we bless you, Father. And Father God, we just ask in the name of Jesus that you have your way even now as your word is getting ready and going forth. We ask that it be all you and none of me. I submit myself. I surrender every, every part of my being, my complete faculty to you, Holy Spirit. Now use me, please, Master, because your word is so critical in this hour. And so I'm submitted and I trust you, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. So it'll be all of you, none of me. Father God, I'm asking that you'll bless the people. Draw them to this place. Draw them, Father God, to this word. 
whether they're, however they're streaming it, Father God. If they're doing it through our website, if they're doing it on Facebook, however they're streaming it, Father God, allow them to hear the word that you are sending forth for them in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we give you the honor, we give you the glory, we give you the praise, even those that are on the conference line. Father God, encourage their hearts and, and Father God, allow us to receive your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, I want you to go to, to, the, to, the, to, go, to, the, to the to the letter that James wrote to those that were scattered. Um, James chapter 1, verse 17. James, of course, was, was they said he was the brother of Jesus Christ. And I never really found where it said stepbrother and all of that stuff. I just So we just referenced that he's the brother because it wasn't. They both had the same mother, but they had different fathers, Jesus and James. So the, the scripture reads this way. Every good and every perfect gift is from above. And it comes down from the father of lights with whom there is no variance or, var or variableness, neither shadow of turning. That is very powerful. Every good gift, every to those that were scattered, listen to this. Um, it's James from chapter above. 1, verse 17. It comes James, down from words. the father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. And so it's important that we realize that everything that comes from God is first good for us and perfect because it comes from God. The greatest gift, way, every good and spirit, the greatest gift is from above to man and it comes down from the is Father the salvation of, of our souls. The there greatest is gift to man no is the salvation of our souls by the God. shadow of turning Christ Christ from God and the power is of the Holy first good for us. The greatest and gift. perfect because it comes from God. The greatest gift, way, every we know God is the one who designed and executed the plan of our salvation. God is the only one that could have, we, we, could, we, we did not and could not help God save us. It's not possible. We had no conscience of the need to be saved. Therefore, we have to give God glory. We have to thank God for this amazing grace, this amazing favor where he has saved our souls. But I don't believe God just saved us so that we can walk around and say, yeah, I'm saved. I don't think he saved us so that we can, we can live any kind of way. I believe God saved us for a reason and there are various purposes. I believe that we, I've concluded that God saved us for a reason. The first reason that God saved us is because he loves us. Remember that God loves us. The Bible said we were predestined. He knew us before he put us in our mother's womb. He loves us. And then he the next reason is so that we can be his family, his sons and his daughters. As his sons and his daughters, we have immediate, we have immediately gained access to who God is. Who is he? He is, he is the, the creator of all things. He is the maintainer of all things. All things are possible with God. God knows everything. God is everywhere at all times. God is, he has all power in his hand. We, we gain access to all of that because now, as we accept Jesus Christ, he is our father. So we have immediately gained access to who he is and the amazing, abundant life God has afforded us. In Christ, God has afforded us life and he's afforded us life eternally. Now, now let me share, let me share something with you that I feel is critical. Although we are adopted into God's family, we have access to all the promises of God. That does not mean we are willing to do all that is required to get all that God has provided. We have to have a willingness to, to do all that it takes in order to get what God has provided. Now, some people get in the door, meaning, you know, I'm saved, I, I, I'm good, and that is all they're willing to do. They're not willing to do anything else because there's another part to, after I'm saved, then there's regeneration. So a lot of people are never really regenerated. Others come all the way in by listening to God. Others come all the way in. We come all the way in by listening to God, hearing his instructions concerning accessing his, his blessings and his promises. And then we live according. Let me do that again. Some just get in the door. They accept Jesus. That's it. Life, life is chaotic. They, they don't grow. They don't develop. Then there are those of us who come all the way in. We're seeking God. We're, we're looking to find out the promises of God. We're trying to find out how does it work. We're trying to, we're humbling ourselves. We're submitting ourselves and allowing the spirit of God to develop our character, to raise us up, 
So, so we are, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are able when we are allowing, when we submit to the Holy Spirit, as we submit to the Holy Spirit, we are allowing ourselves to be partakers of the promises and the blessings of God. It is possible for a person to believe in Jesus Christ and not grow as a child of God. It is. It's possible for a person to believe. To ex I believe he's the Son of God. I believe that he came. I believe that he, he lived holy. I believe that he gave his life. He died the way God said he died. I believe there's total sacrifice on my behalf. They believe, but they do not grow spiritually. Let me show you. That is the difference of salvation and regeneration. Salvation. Salvation is the work of God to bring us into his family. Through the sacrifices of Jesus Christ and our faith in all Jesus accomplished. Let me do it again. There's a difference. The difference is between those who come all the way in and get it and those who don't. It's, general, it's salvation, just being saved versus being saved and being regenerated. The word salvation is the work of God to bring us into his family through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and our faith in all Jesus has accomplished. Regeneration. Regeneration is this. Our growth and development as children of God by the empowerment and the teachings of the Holy Spirit. Let me do it again because these are going to be important as I go forward. Salvation. God has drawn us to salvation. That's our choice. We can be regenerated. We can begin to experience all the promises and the blessings of God through regeneration. Regeneration is, salvation first, is the work of God to bring us into his family. Through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and our faith in all Jesus has accomplished. Regeneration is our growth and development as children of God by the empowerment and the teachings of the Holy Spirit. They are two different parts to our life, our new life as adopted children of God. So we have to, we have to and that was just a sidebar, but we have to realize that once I get saved, I need to take the time to be regenerated. I need to get in the word. I need to be committed to the word. I need to dedicate myself to yielding to the Holy Spirit. If I missed that 40 years ago, I can get it right today. If I missed it yesterday, I can get it right today. I just need the regeneration part if, I, if I'm already saved. Sometimes we're not, we have not, we never accepted Jesus Christ. Now, now, that is the difference. Now, when, 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 when God draw uh, he drew us to Jesus Christ to, to be adopted in his family according to scripture he drew us first and foremost because he loves us the first reason he drew us was because he loved us I mean, he loves us and, 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 and God's love is the prosperity of our souls get this the prosperity of our souls God drew us because uh, he draws us he drew us because he loved us and, 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 and he drew us first and foremost because he loved us and then in and, 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 and God's love and his love is the prosperity of our soul. The prosperity of soul, get this, the prosperity of soul, of our souls, is the advancement of our thinking. And this with the cognitive. What God, what the Holy Spirit does is he comes in and he restructures, you know, how we were thinking defeated. We couldn't, we had all these limitations. We had all these um, ceilings. We couldn't do anything great. We couldn't get anywhere, even though we desired to do it. In regeneration, in regeneration, our cognitive is redeveloped. The cognitive is the is the process and the thought and, and the thinking patterns of life where the Holy Spirit comes in and he regenerates. The Bible said we're our soul is renewed by God. So the Holy Spirit comes in and he renews our soul because we were born under curses and we were born in environments that were conducive to the things that, that causes us fear to this very day, that were conducive to ignorance and a lack of knowledge. And so now as we go with God, our soul, our thinking, our, our, our cognitive way, our souls, our thinking process is developed. It begins to come into focus. We begin to think now in the, in the patterns, in the form, in the ways that God has ordained us to think so that we can experience. See, a lot of times when you don't experience the promises and the blessings of God, you don't think they are real. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, they are real. But remember, God works with the soul and then as the soul is developed, as your thinking change, as, as the way your thought patterns are developed, you begin to change. You begin to get in different circumstances. Where, how far you want to go, you can go, but you got to stay with God. Because, because as you're moving forward in the blessings of God, the challenges of life will always challenge you to stop or to wait or to hold up. And then and it does that through 
convincing you to get in sin and stay in sin and, and then get locked in sin. You can't give up the sin. And then you then you're then you then your thinking is stopped right where you are. So you still think you're in the patterns of renewed and being refreshed and moving forward in actuality, you're stuck. And you're just repeating. You're just you're like the people of Israel just walking around the mountain for 40 years. <laughs> the, the devil is a liar. You have to be you have to be willing to get understanding. And all of you getting get understanding. Sin causes death. What death? Death means that my cognitive world is being refreshed, being renewed. I could think on another level. I could function on another level. I could see life from another perspective. All of a sudden, it stops. Well, it's, look at this. Check this. Check your soul. Check the sin. Check what's going on. Check your, check your feelings. Check what's going on in your mind, in your heart. Who you, who you have fought against? Are you hurt by somebody? Are you disappointed? Are you frustrated? Are you holding out against God? Are you holding out against people? Check your soul and then go to God and be honest with God and say, God, my soul is in trouble. I need you to re renew my soul. That's God. Somebody say hallelujah to that. Now, let me get back to my, my, my thoughts here. So I'm, I'm going to say, when, when God drew us to Jesus Christ, to be adopted into his family. According to scripture, he drew us first and foremost because he loves us. In God's love is the prosperity of the soul. The prosperity of the soul is the advancement of our thinking and our ability to achieve the blessings God has for us by the strength and power of God, which is within us, which is the Holy Spirit. God literally lives in us to bring us to a new place. He lives in us in the person of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is the change from thinking in the forms of lack and fear to thinking in the forms of substance and faith. Amen. This, this, the Holy Spirit is the one that comes in. And he, now, Jeremiah 29 and 11 says this. For this, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. The plans to prosper you and not to harm you. That's what God says in this word. He said, I've got plans to prosper you and not to harm you. He said, I've got plans to prosper you and not to harm you. I want you to hear that. Because a lot of things you go through, you think, well, no, no, no. Through your suffering, sometimes that's where your blessings are. You have to go, you have to go through on the inside to see the difference on the outside. So, so, so this is what he said in Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, de declares the Lord. The plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. 3 John chapter 1, verses, I mean chapter 1, verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Get this. It is God's plan to prosper us and to give us hope and a future according to Jeremiah 29. And, and it's God's desire for us to prosper as our soul prospers and be in good health. Now, according to John, 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, it all depends on the prosperity of our soul. It is apparent that our soul must prosper in order to experience the threefold blessing God has, has, has desired or he desires for our lives. The threefold desire of God for our lives is, number one, to live in relationship with him. You see, see, God does, see if we live in right relationship with God, different things will come in our lives, but we're so into him and he's so into us that he can come back, he can fight our battles for us. So, so it's God's desire for us to live in, in relationship with him, living in relationship with God is prayer, submissiveness, and obedience. Get this. Living in relationship with God is prayer, hearing God more than talking to God, submitting to what God said. God, you know, I, I don't know. I, I try to do everything, but I submit my will to which is, and then obedience. When you submit to the Holy Spirit, he brings forth obedience. So, so it, it's the prayer, the submissiveness, and the obedience. They are the key to maintaining the, the, the desired will of God for our lives. They are the key to make the, 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 the prayer, submissiveness, and obedience. They are the keys to maintaining God's desire of blessing us uh, and, and prospering our souls. It's actually the prosperity of our souls in right relationship with God because it's always going to prosper. It's always going to grow. It's always going to develop. Now, the next thing is this. That was never, the next thing, we must desire to be submissive to God by intentionally yielding to the Holy Spirit. We have to subject our will to the Holy Spirit's will. The workings of the Holy Spirit, we have to subject our will to the workings of the Holy Spirit. The workings of the Holy Spirit, the workings of the Holy Spirit, 
the workings of the Holy Spirit are beyond our understanding. We just have to yield to him. You know, let him do what he does in and through our lives. It's important to subject, to, to subject our will to the Holy Spirit so we can experience the critical directions and instructions of God for our soul to be renewed. Listen now, we, we, it is important to subject our will to the Holy Spirit. Get this now. This, is, this will take you somewhere you've never been. It will allow you to understand things you've never understood. We have to subject our will to the Holy Spirit so we can experience the critical directions and instructions of God for our soul. Remember, our soul must prosper. Our soul must mature. Our soul must change. The way our cognitive, our thinking system, that we, we, God wants us to begin now to, to think we're the family of God, so we, we need to think as God thinks. Number three, this is the third. This is the third piece. The threefold blessings God desires. This is it. We must realize these are God's plans for our lives. This is important. We, 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 as we're moving forward, God saved us because he wanted to. God, it's God's plan it's God's plan to prosper us. It's God's plan to, to, for us to be in good health. We really don't know how he's going to do it. We really don't know how he can. We don't know. We have to humble ourselves and realize that it's not our plans. A lot of times we're getting Christ and we try to take over the say our own salvation, our own. No, no, no. Remember, God is the one that instigated, initiated it, brought you, brought you and I into salvation. Now he must finish. The Bible says he's the author and the finisher of our faith. We get in the most danger when we think that our brain has all of a sudden caught up with God's brain and we can handle it. No, our brain should be submitting to the will, the word, the purpose, and the intent of, of God. Now, so number three is we must realize these are God's plans for our lives. We do not know what they are unless God reveals them to us and live them out through us by the Holy Spirit. I'll do it again because I want you to hear it. We must realize these are God's plans for our lives. We do not know what they are unless God reveals them and live them out through us in the person of the Holy Spirit. In humility, we, mu we must realize we cannot do what we do not know to do. Remember, we don't know. Like in God's plans, it's a, if God is, he wants to live and have his being with inside of us. God can walk out his plans for our lives. See, this is what we're used to. This is the independence. You know, as we grow, you can do it on your own. As we grow, you can do it on your own. You can do this. Now. But God don't, we can't do that with God because we have to keep growing and he has to keep teaching us. And we really cannot, because of our sin state, we cannot do God. If we could do God's will, we would need Jesus and we wouldn't need the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. His assignment is to empower us, is to comfort us and to teach us the ways of God. So let me give this again. In humility, we must we must realize we cannot do what we, what we do not know to do. We cannot do what we do not have the ability to do. The indwelling Holy Spirit is the ability to know and do God's will in and through us. We, can, we cannot obey God if we don't yield to God. We have to yield. We, we, man have all, has, has always tried to obey God. Jesus even had a problem obeying God, even in the Garden of Gethsemane. That's why he had to yield his will to the Holy Spirit. And if Jesus had to yield his will, we have to get understanding, okay, you know, I want my life to be better. I want to see my family do better. I want things that, but apparently if they're doing, if they're not doing as well as you want them to do, you don't have the plan. I don't have the plan. I've seen progress made in my family, the things I love, the things I desire to do by admitting, humbling myself and saying, God, I have no idea. Holy Spirit, I must yield to you that you will bring this to pass. I, I don't get my, you know, and then sometimes I get a little bit out beside myself, but I come back to my senses. I realize, hey, Holy Spirit, I don't know. You must realize I don't know. I need you. So we cannot obey God without God who indwells us. We have to yield to the Holy Spirit. We must realize our total and absolute dependence upon God at every turn in order to experience the desires of God for our lives. God is the one that saved us. He drew us into Christ. God is the one that's got a plan to prosper us. It's his plan. If God has got the plan to, and, and prosperity of the soul moves you into the natural prosperity realm. Let me give you this. So, so it's all God. So when we look toward, when we look, when we look toward prosperity of our soul, we must be mindful it requires God who indwells us in the Holy Spirit to fulfill every thought, 
every step and all movement in and through us. See, when you get in Christ, you're going to begin to want, God will begin to expose you to good and perfect gifts and things that you, oh, God, thank you. I'd like to have the God. I'd like to live that. I'd like to see my children do that. I'd like to say, well, it's going to take God. Amen. Give me some scriptures that's going to help you. Now, I'm going into the, I, I, I found, I felt like the Amplified is good for this, and I'm going to give them to you. Uh, the Amplified is good for this. So I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. I want you to give it. It's going to bless you. I want you to hear this. Now, now this, is, this is going to back up everything that I just taught you. But on the contrary, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 in the Amplified. But on the contrary, as the scripture says, what eyes have not seen, ears has not heard. So we don't know. We've never seen what God has. We don't know what he has. So we don't know. It has not entered into the heart of man all that God has prepared, made ready, keeps ready for those who love him. We gain love for God by submitting to God and trusting God and relying on God. We gain love by seeing God's faithfulness, by seeing God's force. God has been doing this, doing this pandemic. God has given me a peace. God has provided. God is taking care of us. God is doing so many amazing things. I can't even quite tell you yet because I don't even want to put no kind of. I, God is amazing. Just believe me. But but so so now get, let me let me do let me do first Corinthians again. I want to get it all out. I'm going nine through twelve, and this is amplified. But on the contrary, as the scripture says, what eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and has not entered into the heart of man, all all that God has prepared, made ready, keeps ready, for those who love Him, who hold Him in affectionate reverence, respect, and honoring him above everything else, promptly obeying him, promptly obeying him by the Holy Spirit, and gratefully recognizing the benefits he's bestowed. We can only recognize the benefits that he's bestowed upon us by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Okay, so, in verse 10 says, yet to us God has un unveiled them. Let me show you what he's saying. God reveals his plans as he's able to walk it. We can see it as he's doing it. <laughs> He's not going to give it to us in advance for what? We can't do it. <laughs> As we yield to the Holy Spirit, we see the amazing God, the awesome God, the great God. We see him walking through our lives and bringing it to existence. And then I'll tell you what you have to do. We have to, we have to start from somewhere. In there. If you hadn't seen God do nothing real, real big, start asking God if you just to give you some food to eat, or give you your right mind, or, or give you a joy. And don't find it strange if you if you are not angry anymore when you ask God to take anger away. Don't find it strange if you're all of a sudden happy when you ask God to take sadness away. Don't find it strange that you're, you're, you're finding yourself being able to do stuff when you ask God to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Don't, don't find it strange that you're able to do what you could not do before God gave it to you. Bless God. Somebody say hallelujah to that. Now, yet to us God has unveiled. Now this is as we go walking, yielded to the Holy Spirit. He unveils. He reveals his plans, his blessings, his power, his witty inventions, his creative ideas, his know-how. Hey, glory to God. He revealed them by and through his spirit. This is scripture. For the Holy Spirit searches diligently, and this is, and he, he is God, so he has the plan of God, exploring and examining everything. The Holy Spirit in us begins to remove the hindrances with us and through us. By moving us, or moving our mind away from, this is cognitive thinking patterns, away from all those issues, all those concerns that consume us. He begins to push us in a direction that allows us to experience God for real, God Almighty, with all power in his hand, able to do anything and all things that he want to do. And you can never dictate to God and tell him what to do. Don't, don't get this twisted. This is not a thing where God is still God. He's sovereign. He knows. He, he, the guy's not insecure that he needs you to tell him what to do. Let me go, let me go back to this, this verse. I'm going to do verse 10 again. Yet, yet to us, God has unveiled and revealed them by and through his spirit. For the Holy Spirit searches diligently, exploring and examining everything, even sounding the profound and bottomless things of God. You, you can, God will never run out of blessing. He will never run out of encouragement. He will never run out of healing. He will never run out of deliverance. He will never run out. Exploring and examining everything and sounding the profound and boundless things of God, the divine counsels, God is always ministering, and things hidden and beyond man's scrutiny. 
she got to give you, tell you something about you and give you a plan that somebody will sit back and look at you and say, they would not do it. No, they do it so great. How they do that there? God, Holy Spirit. For what, what persons perceives or knows and understands what passes through a man's thoughts except the man's own spirit within him. Just so no one discerns comes to know and comprehend the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Now, we have not received the spirit that belongs to the world. That's where we're coming from. Remember, we're transitioning from what that's why we have to open ourselves up to be open to the Holy Spirit. And we understand how the Holy Spirit works by studying the word of God. But the spirit, the Holy Spirit, who is from God, give us that we might realize and comprehend and appreciate the gifts of divine favor and blessing so freely and lavishly bestowed on us by God. That's God. That's, that's what he saved us for. That's what he, that's what he, that's what he said. That's what he regenerates us for. Philippians 3.13 Amplify. I can do all things which he has called me to do through him, Christ Jesus, who strengthens and empowers me. So it's by him, not myself. That's important, brothers and sisters. I can't tell you enough. It's critical to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Not on your own. It's you, you, it's you, well, you should say we're Christ sufficient. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me. Glory to God with inner strength and confidence. A confident peace. Now, let me give you, let me give you this for God's giving me. God is the only, uh, God is our only ability to go beyond our natural limited abilities. As we gain the desire to do greater, be greater than we are, we must trust God. And when I get saved, I'm going to have desires to do greater and be greater. There are times when we will desire greater good and perfect gifts from God. When we desire to achieve and move forward according to who God reveals we are in him, we will find ourselves in need of something we don't have because God moves by faith. See, as you, your faith is yielding to the will of God, yielding to the work of the Holy Spirit. So God can move. See, you can be complacent, and it's not where God wants you to be. You, you, God, has, God is great in us. The investment of God's greatness in us is him. And so, so he, if anybody will yield to God now, and, you, and you're needing life to turn around and blessings to in, in, infuse your family, and infuse your resources, and it's not too late. You can do it, but you have to yield to the Holy Spirit. Now, let me give you this. It is easy. Now, I, I said this. I said, as God is moving us forward, as he's, as he's ushering in us and giving us these really abundance credit, we will find ourselves in need of something we do not have. It is easy to just walk away. It's easy to walk away from that hope and desire, especially when it seems we do not have what it takes to get there. The truth is, we do have what it takes to get there. We have the Holy Spirit, who is God indwelling us. We just need to yield to the Holy Spirit because all things are possible to him, through, through Christ Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, who is manifesting in the Holy Spirit who strengthens us. Remember, there are always temptations when you begin to move forward. There are always temptations to stop you. There are always, but go back to the Holy Spirit. Let him give you the wisdom so you can identify it. And then he can take you, you, you can, like, if you, let's say you get a cup in a temptation, or you get angry. You, you might think, well, you know, they're against me. They're trying to stop me. No, it ain't no day. When God is for you, nobody can stop you but you <laughs> and your attention on they. Put your attention back on God and begin to give him glory and then praise him and say, God, I got upset with them. And my feelings got hurt. You know, they were intimidating toward me and I backed up. I stopped. But now, God. I am yielded to you all over again. I want you to have your way in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, so, the, so, the, so the question should, should come to mind is what I am seeking worth trying to accomplish. If it's what I'm, I'm seeking. If I, if I want generation curses broke off my family, if I want for God to put me in a position where I can be responsible and I can take care of the things and, and, and leave an inheritance in this earth, if God wants to put me in a position where I can take care of other people and, and see ministry where, 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 where folk are healed, delivered, fed, taken care of, then I need to go to God to help me. So the question is, is what I'm trying to do, what God is calling me to do, is it worth it? Is it worth it? And then, and then this is what you should ask is, will it make life better for others? Will it, will it, will it advance the kingdom of God in word and deeds? If the answers are yes, then it is worth moving forward and seeking God 
for a moment by moment energy, moment by moment instructions, and the spirit of discernment. That is that is that 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 is all in yielding to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is given to us to help us and empower us to be all we are created and saved and regenerated to be. Now listen, brothers and sisters, I'm going to say this to you. This is, this is important. God saved us for a reason. God's reason for saving us is so that we can prosper, so that we can experience the plans. Prospering it's not necessarily monetary. It's not necessarily houses and things and cars and clothes. The prosperity that God is talking about is making you the head and not the tail interiorly where these things will come into your life, making us more like him, making us have the desires that he has. When you have the desires and you become an entity in the kingdom of God that he can use for his glory, Life will be added to you. Things will be added. They'll come to you from the, you'll be like, oh, God, thank you. Oh, God, thank you. Oh, God, thank you. But most importantly, brothers and sisters, remember this. Remember this, that all things are possible through Christ Jesus. But I have to be yielded continuously, moment by moment. Second, I cannot, I, I cannot second guess it. I cannot think I'm right. I, 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 I must I cannot go on my own. When things get confusing, God is not about confusion. Go back to God. Go back to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, this is confusing. I yield to you. Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, I need you. Holy Spirit, I submit to you. I submit my whole way and do it. And how do I do that? Well, you, you imagine that at, at, a, at a yield sign and you got their second. Well, the person who got their first, they, don't, they need to have the right away. Well, let the Holy Spirit, he's in you, so his right away going to take you with it. But bless God, right? As he's moving, you moving when you yield to him, you, you say, I'm giving up. That, that don't make sense to me. That don't add up. That is not what, no, no, I'm going to yield to the Holy Spirit. I'm going to let him do it. Listen, brothers and sisters, it's, it's possible. You know, I'm decreeing over your life that, that you will prosper, that you are healed in your body. I'm decreeing that you are blessed. I'm decreeing that no weapons formed against you shall prosper. I'm, I'm decreeing that even now, in this season, as God is preparing to bring you out of this season, that he's all he's he's gifted you. He's 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 released something in you. He's released an idea, an invention, a hope in you that you will see the blessings in your life, in your children's lives, in your grandchildren, in your family, in your environment. You're gonna have creative creative ideas and witty inventions to start businesses, and you're gonna pursue it, and you're gonna go after it. You're not gonna give up because you're not gonna trust you. You're not gonna do what you used to do. You're not gonna do the failures. You're gonna trust the Holy Spirit. And he's going to bless you, and you're going to experience it, brothers and sisters. I love you. But let me tell you one thing. I want you to hear me clear. If Jesus is not the Lord of your life, all my hope for you is vain. It's just a assembling, uh, bra it's just assembling brass. It's nothing. You have, the key to all of this is first being drawn by God to Christ Jesus. Then when he draws you, you, you have to really say, okay, Jesus, I need you. Father God, forgive me for my sins and my trespasses. Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I need you to be my Lord and Savior. Now, if you need to say that, I'll do it again. Father God, forgive me for my sins. I want you to say it with me. I want you to please, Father God, forgive me for my sins. Jesus Christ, I need you. I need you to be my Lord. I need you to be my Savior. Jesus Christ, please come in into my life and just take over. Now that I've asked you, I believe you've come. With my mouth, I confess, Jesus, you are the Lord of my life. With my heart, I believe God raised you from the dead, and I thank you for eternal life. Father God, thank you right now for baptizing me in the Holy Spirit. Thank you for blessing me so that I can experience the life that you ordained, you've ordained for me. Oh, Father God, and we bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. And thank you for saving my soul. And then say these words, I am saved by God, redeemed and secured from all eternal death and danger in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless God for that. Now, brothers and sisters, you know, we, we give. I want you to stay faithful. I want you to stay committed to God. I, even though you're not in, I'm in here and it's still well, but I, we're coming back. So we need to keep it ready. We need to keep it straight. So we need to give. We need to give our tithe. We need to give our offering. Remember, brothers and sisters, the tithe are holy. Oh, they're holy. The Bible said, well, a man robbed God. He talks about a curse being upon people's lives because they keep robbing God. How am I robbing you, God? He said to, through the tithe. The tithe is 10% of what God has allowed you to get, all of it, just 10% of it. You keep the 90, 
when you give God the 10, the first part of it, then you, you're asking, you're trusting God to be responsible for the 90 so you can take care of, you don't have these holes in your pocket. You can take care of your responsibility. You gain the courage to take care of things that are necessary. You can give. I'm, it's online how you can give, but I want you to be obedient. I want you to be faithful. I want you to be consistent in your tithe, your offerings, praying for me as your pastor, my family, this congregation, praying for the body of Christ. Be consistent. Prepare yourself. Get your faith up because we're coming back soon. We're coming back. And so you get your faith up. And, and, and so when it's time to come, you won't be one of those that's still sitting back after God has said to move. <laughs> Bless God for that. So, so it's right there. You should be able to be able to give. I want you to go ahead and, and be able to, but I want to pray over your offering. Father God, we desire for you to bless our giving because your word said that if we were bring the tithe into the storehouse so there'll be meat in your house, you would open up the windows of heaven. We receive that you said that the tithe are holy and they belong to you. The blessings behind the tithe and the first fruit and the offering. Father God, we claim those. Father God, we know you've ordained men to give into our bosom. We, we, we receive that in the name of Jesus. So as every giver give, glory to God, I decree in the most powerful name of Jesus Christ, they are blessed. They are blessed. Increase, increase in wisdom and understanding and favor and love and peace and joy. And in their, in their natural resources in Jesus' name. Listen, brothers and sisters, I, I will be right back here on Wednesday and we're getting everything. We're going to get our training this week. So I love you. I thank God for you. Be blessed in Jesus' name.